uppercut, uppercut, sonic boom! Well, hello there, humans, hippies, earthlings, hope you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to Channel on Bushcrew, and today we're going to be talking about positioning. Positioning is everything in World of Tanks Blitz. So many people come to me and say, Bushcrew, I've watched all your videos, and I'm still terrible at the game. I still can't get over 40% win rate. I try, I try, I try, and it, it makes me kind of sad for them, because the thing that nearly every... Uh, person that's in that position has in common is their positioning is poor. It's all about where you are on the map as to whether or not you can be effective with your vehicle. The worst place you can be is in the middle of the map. Now that Leopard 1 is a case in point. Anytime you put yourself, and these are the simple rules of positioning, that's what this video is called. Anytime you put yourself between two vehicles, you're doing it wrong. There will be situations where you have to do this. That's fine, I understand. There'll be situations where you do it unwittingly. We all do that. Uh, but you can see, you can't angle to two vehicles at once and be effective unless you're very, very lucky or you're in the perfect tank and the enemies are in terrible tanks with no pen. Like you're in a mouse and there's two guys spamming you who are in a fail platoon. I don't know. You, you can find a situation for anything. Look at the spot I'm in here. There's a T57 Heavy up here. There's We've got two caps. And so all the pressure is on Red to make things happen. And Red just keep falling into the pressure. They keep going to the middle of the map. And this is why we're going to win this one pretty easily. There's 57 Heavies on the flank. He's a little bit soft on the hit points. Here comes another Waffle Tractor who's going to go middle map panic. He's seen the cap situation. He wants to get to the middle of the map. And he's just basically meaning he can't, that's not a tank that can angle to anyone. And he's now between multiple tanks. There's an IS-7 on the other side of him. There's me right here. This 57 Heavy, it might look crazy, but you'll see in a bit um, how difficult it is for that T-57 head to hit me. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to you at the moment, but the reason I'm so confident here is that T-110E4 is right there, and it blocks his line of sight beautifully. And behind me, there's a Waffle Tractor. So every time he comes out, the Waffle Tractor's pinging him, or at least making like he's going to ping him. And that's just scary. Not the Waffle Tractor, sorry, the uh, Yag Tiger. He doesn't know where the Yag Tiger is now. The Yag Tiger's moved. Uh, this is positioning 101. The... Anyone that goes middle map or into a position where there's multiple flanks being fired, if you're there for any length of time, you're giving the opportunity to the bad guys to absolutely blitz you. And this Centurion 7 of Mark 1 is just brilliant for this. I've never been bad in this tank. I don't know why. Like, I think my win rate on this is 76% or something on my main account. It's only 68% or something on my account here, but it still averages well over 2K on both accounts. And... It's just a weird thing. It's a formulaic tank. If you're in Blitz and you want to be solid, get a tank that has a great gun and good gun depression. And if you get good at positioning, you will just get damage out of it all day long. Now, the first rule, obviously, pretty straightforward there. Don't be between two vehicles. If you're between two vehicles that both have shots at you, then at opposite angles, then you're very unlikely to be successful in your tilt. The second rule of positioning is put your tank, and this is even more important than the first one, put your tank in a position where it can be successful. It can do what it was built to do. The Centurion 7 Mark I, one, one of the reasons why I've been good at that tank across all the years that I've played it, even after a lot not playing much, just going back and immediately, I think I played nine games in it the other day and averaged 2,700, and we won eight of them. There's a simple reason, because I let it do what it does. Gun depression, fire, hide. That's all I do with it. This is the KV-4. I'm angling to the right, because I don't want to be in between two tanks. I can angle to the right. Once I'm across there, there's only the tanks in front of me. I put my gun up in the air so it can't be seen, because this is a frontline tank. And I know that the tanks in front of me are not frontline tanks. They're not tanks that are going to pen easily into me doing this. Angling, hiding my weak points, and now this flank is gonna fold. It is gonna fold like a cheap suit and the entire game is gonna get opened up like a nutcracker because these guys can't hold the top versus a heavy that doesn't have to worry about bouncing them. Uh, and then everything else just comes along naturally. 
This is a grill. This is the same thing. You've got to put the position, the tank into a position where it can be successful. Don't get between two tanks. Put the vehicle in a position it can be successful. Everyone's got a gun, but the grill's got a specifically sexy gun. It's a very accurate, high damage, high alpha weapon, high DPM, high alpha weapon, but it's got no armor. What it does have is mobility. It can get there very, very quickly where it needs to go. So this is Himmelsdorf. Not a lot of spaces to hide in Himmelsdorf. Knowledge being power. Set the tank upright. Take the time. Turn. Go slow. Have you got a camo net on your grill? You bloody well should have. So that means when you fire, you're going to manage to keep your distance even though it's only like a small percentage. It helps, right? And now look at this. I'm on Himmelsdorf. I have no enemies on the left. I've got no enemies on the right. I've just got enemies straight down the gun barrel right in front of me. And that means that I can use the tank to do what it was built to do. Send out shots at long range with a super accurate gun and take very little damage back. Now, this is important. You can see the enemy grill. He's moved all the way up to in front. There's a simple axiom for this. I've always said this. It's why do you have to go right next to the tank to do the same damage you can do at extreme range? There is no damage drop off in World of Tanks Blitz. You do the same damage at 250 meters that you do at, 200, at two meters. So why drive it all the way forward if you're just going to do the same damage and take far more back. There's that grill. It's gone predictably well for him. That's the third time I've hit him because he's as tall as a bloody house. And even though I've screwed up two HE shots at him, I'm now at two and a half K and I'm, I've not been spotted yet. I, I just, I've got to emphasize this. When you're spotted too, you go, you just go, you just go. And then you might have to put yourself in a position that's not ideal, but I'm still going to do it. I'm happy to trade here. I don't have to trade that um I don't have to trade badly but I'm happy to trade and then I'm waiting for the uh the camo to reset and then we're going to roll across as fast as we can oh hang on we'll take that that's a possible kill shot look at how I'm rotating around behind my vehicles do you see how I'm I'm like waiting you can't fire without one in the clip and here we go just waiting 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 be patient Patience is key here because it's like if you can feel the impending sense of doom, like as your tanks are dying and the caps ticking down and all that kind of stuff. But there's only been two and a half minutes of gameplay. Honest to God, we 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 treat Blitz like it's like time is flowing through our hands faster than it actually is. We're now nearly three minutes into the game, like. The cap points are nowhere near finished. And all we want to do is absolutely make sure that we've got the right thing. Now, you might say this is selfish, but if you're telling me that I need to be up there dying for moral rectitude, I'm going to just scream at you. If you're in a grill or a waffle tractor or an RU251 or uh, any tank that has no bloody armor, um... I struggle to find any reason for you to get to the front line just because there's some teammate who's yelling at you saying you're a noob, coward, whatever. Like, and watch this. This is beautiful positioning. And this is the, the reason I really wanted to use this clip. We jerk one out. That's great. I don't shoot at the high damage target. I could have got more damage by shooting at the uh, Chinese TD there. I shoot at the one that's low hit points and we clear it and then we put this poor bugger in the horrible worst possible position he can be in you ready he's between two tanks he would love to kill that t62a but he's going to turn around to shoot me to do it and that means he's going to take damage and that's fine by me because then he turns back and the t62's got him and we got him coming and going don't get between two tanks and you're probably going to be all right. I'm Bushka. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the channel. Hope you're enjoying the videos. Hope you're having a good, good time in the world. And uh, look, just stay safe out there and behave. And <laughs> well, we'll keep churning out the content. I am doing a replay stream every Monday night in A-Time Pacific. 
Um, and I think it's about 5 p.m. Pacific or so. It'll be up on, on the channel. I'm putting it up on the banners. I'm getting some banners made um, for all my channels. Mondays, uh, Sunday and A-Time is a PUBG Mobile live public scrims on the PUBG Mobile channel. Uh, then Monday night and A-Time is the replay live stream. We've been getting like nearly 400 people watching that. It's been bloody brilliant. Uh, we just go and watch a whole load of replays, talk a lot of crap and have a lot of fun. It's really good fun. If you want to send your replays through to that, Bushka Gaming at gmail.com is the email address to send to. Um, that's grand. Then... The other one is uh, Wednesdays is free. I might be doing a Worlds of Warcraft stream. I've got another channel called Bushka Does Things where I stream everything. Or you can go and follow me on Twitch, the Bushka on Twitch, where I stream everything as well. Um, and then Wednesday night and A time I do a World of Warship stream. Thursday night and A time I do a PUBG Mobile squad stream. Uh, and then we drop videos on all these channels as well. So I'm a busy bee. Um, look after yourselves. Uh, you know what? Uh, we're going to talk you through the positioning on this one. Why not? It's right here. It's right here. I didn't intend to use this. Uh, the thing's on the screen, but uh, stick around for the uh, bonus track on the LP. Look at where the team is here. Look at how many tanks you can see. I've counted five tanks so far. There was a light tank earlier, so that's six. Uh, he's up on the left-hand side of the screen. That means that we're only missing one medium. That's all. So what I'm going to do is go back around. I want to get side shots on them. I want to put the red team between two guns. But I can't be certain. Sorry, there's the light tank. Yeah, there's the light tank there. I can't be certain where the light and the medium are. Voila, they pop. Um, so instead of going straight down as close as I possibly can to the red team, what I'm doing is going as far wide as I possibly can to the red team just to see if I can get shots. Voila, we get an RU251. Pop him in the side of the noggin. Everyone's happier for it. Uh, and this is this is really... I don't know why I didn't use this clip because this is an exact uh, description of what I've been talking about. And then I see that one of my teammates is actually going to push down that flank. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I'll come down and help. And I wait for the T-54. There we go. Here comes our T-92E1. There's a are you up the top still? He's in a bad position. I'm worried about the shots on the side. See how I don't just go rolling sideways out of that? I'm actually watching for shots on the side. I don't mind if I'm taking one from there. That's fine. One shot to clear a tank. And then the RU is going to bugger eyes around. Um, we're going to probably miss this shot because it's just a meme. Um, and then again, two guns. I'm not worried about the RU-251. I don't want to be between two guns. I'll tell you who does though. All these blokes down here. And this is one of the reasons why I love the scent. If you play for positioning, you've got a laser beam of a gun that can fire Hesh rounds. And when you are firing Hesh, that is hitting like a truck. If you fire Hesh, you hit like a truck for a medium tank. I'm rolling over 400 on these shots. You can roll up to 550. Like, it's absolutely crazy. And sometimes you miss. But look at this positioning. This is exactly what I was talking about. Nothing, nothing, nothing but positioning. I've done nothing here apart from watch the minimap, position myself in a, in a way that makes the most sense to not take damage. And there's the T-30. He's the one we've got to watch out for. That was a mistake on my part. You can't be perfect, but I mean, sometimes you've got to, you know, make hit point trades. And I'm happy to do this because if... You, um, if you're the T-30, you realize that there's another tank there and you can't just roll up into the middle of them and whoops, you're now frontal and I got two shots to one and uh, we cleared the T-30. So it's now a one on three. Um, this is now just a hit point trade. Like it's, it's just, you get it to the point where you've got three tanks versus one and you just go and put him on put him in the blender and, and make life difficult. He actually does a really good job here because obviously that is a, a good tank, the Conway. But um, at the end of the day, it's it's definitely not uh, going to get it. Like you can you can see we're pushing her around. He, we're going to let him take shots. We're still going to get, we're trading damage for distance. Like if, if he wants to come forward, he's going to have to take a shot. This is where the sense gun is actually very, very good. Look how accurate this thing is. Just bang, straight through. APCR, not mucking around with Hesh. Still three tanks on one. So even if he takes one out, then we're just going to go and clear the last tank. And he does. 
And that's positioning. That's what positioning is all about. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Look after yourselves. Um, and as always, stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.